are turn-based RPGs dying? No, uh, at least I don't think so anyway, but things are changing and not all of them are changing for the better. When turn-based RPGs first started off back in the tabletop RPG days of Chainmail, which eventually became Dungeons and & Dragons, and then the future iterations of that and the various evolutions from there, people took turns while simulating combat because of the dice rolls and attack and damage rolls and calculations that took some time to figure out. At this point, taking turns was necessary. This was where a certain split sort of dissected players into two different categories. Those who thought it was necessity, which then bred creativity, and those who thought it was a necessary evil. Either way, the division back then was kind of a moot point because there was really no alternative. Eventually though, pen and paper RPGs were translated to a digital medium. Early computer RPGs tended to translate that pen and paper experience, including the turn-based battle systems, only now players could act on behalf of each of the party members instead of having your friends do it. Then. It happened. The hard and fast line that turn-based was a necessity blurred at first a little and then a lot. With the introduction of games like Dragon Slayer from Falcom and Hydelide shortly thereafter, the action RPG genre was established and solidified. You didn't have to take turns anymore, but at the cost of being able to control the entire party of characters. Action RPGs and then turn-based RPGs split the role-playing game genre in twain, and whenever there's a split, there will be those who laud one side out to the detriment of the other. Action RPGs and turn-based RPGs would evolve separately from then on and would grow to embrace different aspects of role-playing while eschewing others. Turn-based RPGs with their ease of including large casts of characters would often further embrace the storytelling and dramatic side of things, offering combat that could sometimes be equally contemplative. Fans of strategy RPGs and tactical RPGs like Tactics Ogre and Final Fantasy Tactics will assure you of that. Meanwhile, on the other side of the spectrum, action RPGs would include flashy and fast-paced skill-based combat. And when trying to appeal to a wider audience, the action RPGs definitely had an edge. Action RPG combat is a spectacle, it's fast, it's visceral. Turn-based RPGs are slow methodic and can be pretty hard to understand if you're not already familiar with the concept of hit points and attack turns. Newcomers to the genre are often frustrated because they're coming from video games where their goal of the game is to not get hurt, to now they're being presented with a game in which your characters just stand there and take turns getting hurt. It's kind of like the difference between chess and fencing. You can easily watch a round of fencing and keep up more or less with what's going on with minimal knowledge beforehand, and it could look pretty cool too. To watch a match of chess on the other hand and appreciate the drama and really understand what's going on, you have to know what all of the pieces do and what they are and how they move. You might even have to be familiar with certain formations or patterns, but this doesn't make one inherently better or worse than the other. So when it comes to attracting a new audience, action RPGs just sort of happen to have an edge. You can make a better looking commercial out of the gameplay. You can show it off to a friend and they'll think it looks really cool. Video game reviewers who aren't familiar with turn-based RPGs will give better scores to action RPGs because it's more accessible and it takes less time to appreciate what it has on offer. Because of this, in the early 2000s, video gaming magazines would often criticize turn-based RPGs for having turn-based mechanics, which would infuriate readers like myself who could obviously see what the game journalists of the time could not, and that is that turn-based RPG mechanics were not a necessary evil made no longer necessary. They were not an archaic vestigial appendage that should have been cast off long ago through evolutionary means of the series, for some of us, those turn-based RPG mechanics are a feature, not a bug, and while an outsider's perspective can certainly be helpful in gauging a game's accessibility toward newcomers to the genre, it was absolutely irresponsibly disrespectful to fans of the genre and to the creators of those games. Video game journalists failed turn-based RPG fans and would-be RPG fans by poisoning the well for an entire generation of gamers against a perfectly enjoyable video game genre, one which I personally enjoyed above all others. They spun the narrative that turn-based RPGs were all clones of Final Fantasy and of course that that was somehow a bad thing. 
and I took that personally. Appreciating the strengths of what a turn-based RPG has to offer can require getting unironically invested in the story of the game, fully grasping the nuances of each entry introduces to its own spin on the action RPG battle system. Bing counters and marketing teams apply pressure to the development teams to improve sales by pushing for more action-based elements. Executives will look at the numbers and agree that this is the direction that the corporation needs in order to continue producing successful AAA entries in their long-running franchises. And with the ability to switch between characters on the fly in modern action RPGs, the ability to tell grand stories centering around a party of interesting characters is no longer the exclusive realm of turn-based RPGs. Final Fantasy VII Remake Final Fantasy XV, Final Fantasy XVI are all action RPGs. Final Fantasy XIV, the highest grossing RPG of uh, Square Enix's right now, is also not really turn-based. And Pokemon is experimenting with action like in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Things are certainly changing, and it's easy to feel the doom and gloom of the situation. But I don't think that turn-based is dead. Yakuza Like a Dragon, the latest title in a long-running series, has embraced turn-based mechanics and was a huge success for the series. Once underground niche RPG franchises are starting to gain newfound traction and adoration in the West, such as the Trails series. As Final Fantasy has been losing its relevance in the West, Persona and Shin Megami Tensei are continuing to gain traction. The indie turn-based RPG scene is absolutely flourishing, where it seems like a lot of really exciting new turn-based RPGs are coming out each and every year. And even from Square Enix, we're continuing to see them put out solid turn-based content with triangle strategy just around the corner. Pokemon, for all of its stubborn game design and storytelling tropes, is refusing to fix what ain't broken in their mainline entries, which are of course decidedly turn-based. Furthermore, Final Fantasy has been flirting with the line of introducing action into their turn-based battle systems since as far back as the introduction of the ATB in the Super Nintendo. It's easy to trace the current direction of Final Fantasy all the way back to Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI. Things are changing, but they've always been changing, and love it or hate it, turn-based combat is here to stay, just the same way that platformers will always have jumping mechanics. Their popularity will wax and wane over time with the trends as they come and go, in the same way that the love of thoughtful and methodic challenging gameplay has allowed chess to endure through the ages so too will it allow turn-based RPGs to remain a staple of the industry, so long as we are willing to continue financially supporting the developers who make them. I am Super Derek, and I make thoughtful and thought-provoking videos for gamers who love RPGs, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, everyone.